Well, we lost a, a great friend in, in Sam. Uh, obviously, he was a great coach, but an even better person. Uh, every time I'd talk with Sam, he'd come into the office like so many of our coaches do, but it was never for Sam. It was always something for his guys, and that's the, always the way you put it. Something to help support him, something to, to make the program better for his, his, his guys. Uh, he was so selfless and so supportive of the university. Uh, we're going to miss him greatly. Sam and I have uh, we shared adjacent office space for you know the whole 21 years he was here down in the Boyden basement and um, lately up in on the second floor and uh, you know I think I saw him more than just about more than any of my professional colleagues uh, on a daily basis at Boyden and uh, you know we'd share stories about coaching stories about families. Um, share our frustrations, share our victories, defeats, and all that, and, uh, you know, um, a fist bump to give each other a little encouragement, and um, just friends, you know, colleagues. I, I remember we'd, we'd sometimes be down in the basement all day working away, trying to, trying to get ahead, trying to get an edge, and we'd come up and there'd be six, 12 inches of snow on the ground. We'd say, how the heck did that happen? So when we walked up, and when we moved upstairs and got windows, we thought we were in the penthouse. Always though, you know, share, sharing feelings about what it's like to be a coach and what it's like to be a Division I coach and what it's like, honestly, to struggle with, uh, with um, funding challenges. And, uh, you know, I, th I think we shared those stories and emotions and feelings you know, every day for 20 years. So, you know, walking past your office now, Sam, and uh, putting my hand on your door, okay? Always love you. Sam, I, I, I had many an opportunity, and Sam and I would go and have lunch together, and that was absolutely one of my favorite times, and we would just sit and talk, and he'd talk about his team and what they're doing and the good guys, and he'd talk about his family, and he'd talk about stories, and when you got him on talking about some stories about his life, he'd light up and he was just, uh, it was always a fun conversation when he'd be talking about the things he did and the people he knew and where he was and, and he, it was just a, a really relaxed, really special time that I will always uh, cherish and, and definitely miss. He would glow into my office in the mornings after practice or on his way out um, and he would always be full of energy with a thousand things to say. All I had to do was nod every once in a while and he would just keep on going. We had lunch every week. We would go to Panera and we would always talk about all of the dilemmas in the, in the athletic department and we would solve each and every one of them every lunch. He would always order pick two and then he would never know what to pick. Um, I remember the day that he was diagnosed with cancer and Suzanne, his wife, dropped him off in front of Boyden and I was on my way out to the courts and she put the window down and said, um, Sam needs to tell you something. And he walked up to me and he said, he said, I have cancer. And then he said, I need a hug. He spent the last two years of his life getting and receiving tons of hugs and also feeling the love of all of those people around him. This was a man who had a, a lot of love to give. I had the pleasure of uh, being the uh, academic counselor for the men's soccer team my first six years here so I got to know Sam well and uh, to say that he supported the concept of the student athlete and the value of graduation and a degree is an understatement. Um, he never shied away from, you know, benching somebody if, you know, they didn't complete their study all the time, they missed their academic meeting, they missed the tutor, um, and it could be the best player on the team, and he would, he would treat them the same. So, um, and those players know who they are. So, um, so anybody that's watching this, they know who I'm talking about. Um, but, um, but that just shows you, you know, how important the whole concept of the student athlete was to him. Um, and I think the, 
One of the things that uh, sticks out to me too is, um, you know, I was I got to to be along along the way on their College Cup um, run that they made, and you know, and he was like a little kid at Christmas. I felt like through that entire thing, I think he just he enjoyed the whole process. Um, but I just really remember um, the banquet a few months after the season was over, and he was talking to the team and the parents, and and just how emotional. He was uh, talking about the whole season and just you know I just never seen that side of him before and it just showed me you know how much he just loved the sport how much he loved the team the, his student athletes you know UMass um, you know it's just something I'll never forget is just how emotional he was that day talking about uh, the season uh, because I think it just meant that much to him and it just crystallized you know every reason why he ever got into coaching soccer so um, you know I'm gonna miss him greatly I'm gonna miss the our kind of random conversations he'd pull me in his office even the last four years when I wasn't the team's counselor uh, I'm gonna miss all of that so um, it's great great man great family man and um, you know you can't can't replace Sam Coke so uh, we're gonna miss you coach he had a special way of getting the most out of his guys uh, than any coach that I know. And he would bring in seemingly average athletes and make them great and make them work together. And working together was the key of how, of how they did it. And it was, it was always fun to, to uh, uh, listen to him talk after the, the first game of the season and how they progressed during the season and listened to his passion about how they were playing well together and how they were doing this and how they were focusing on each other and just getting them to work with each other and and I think that just came from him because he just oozed passion for the sport and for team and uh, that that was just uh, something that his his guys picked up on and did so well. He was just so casual he could he could turn off that intensity at times and so it was it was nice to see those moments but you could see when practice was coming up and and he, he shifted right back into that but uh, he was just so um, he, he, he's just such a, 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 a wonderful personality that just would want to listen to you and and want to tell you about what he's doing and want to hear what you're doing and and that was the one of the, the pure joys of, of being around Sam. He was uh, someone who really enjoyed coaching soccer. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of knowing Sam for many years, but we would see each other mostly in, in the recruiting trails. So when I got here, um, and I got to know him better, you know, because we were working closely every day. And one of the things that I was most curious about, and one of the things that I thought we would talk more about was the 2007 Final Four season. You know, as an outsider, when that season occurred, I was really just uh, super impressed with what UMass was able to do and, and was very curious about the season, the makeup of the team, and what was truly special about that group. We did get a chance to talk uh, about that a fair amount, but what I was most impressed with, and I, I think speaks about Sam as a coach and as a person is that he liked to talk much more about guys that came through the program and he was able to help and probably the guys that I think had a real special place in his heart were the guys that kind of went off the rails a little bit maybe had to leave the team for a year some of them even maybe had to leave the university for a period of time and there was one young man that actually got incarcerated and he was so proud uh, about how that young man turned his life around, was able to graduate, was able to uh, really have a wonderfully productive adult life and has now gone on to, to help a lot of people in his line of work. And I remember my first fall here, uh, we were at Adelphi and we're busy with pregame preparations and going through the warm up and you know it, the bench area in, in our half of the field is typically a fairly busy area and uh, uh, you know a lot of people moving around and there was this guy walked in with his son and, and Sam you know 
jumped over the fence, gave him a big bear hug, and you know, it was like, kind of like, what's going on here? And, and uh, you know, he, he came up to me after and he said, that's the guy I was talking about. And, you know, Sam was as competitive as anyone, and there's no question he loved to win. And he did a wonderful job in his career, winning a ton of games, and you know, his, his record was impressive for sure. But there's no question that I think the greatest joy that he took from the job was helping young men. And that was always, always apparent from the way that he went about the job and what he talked most about. This weekend, is, it's uh, my, my uh, seventh uh, PAMS Challenge ride. Um, Sam and I talked quite a bit over the last few years um, as he's been, been uh, was, was going through his uh, struggles with cancer and, um, and uh, he was a, a big advocate and supporter of the ride and then last summer as I rode across the country uh, before that he, he told me stories about uh, his cross country ride which was a, a spectacular event and so we kept in touch during the ride and um, and and he was very supportive of of the um, the whole the, what we're doing with the Pan Mass Challenge and raising money for the Jimmy Fund and Dana Farber the Dana Farber Cancer Institute and and so he was a big supporter of that so this weekend in in honor and in memory of Sam um, and I always ride with with uh, names of people on my jersey, the uh, supporters, friends that are, that are um, either struggling with cancer or have passed away from cancer. Um, I'm going to ride with Sam on my left shoulder this weekend and I feel that that's going to be a huge tribute. I'm going to think of him all weekend long anyway, um, but um, I know he was always, a, uh, he, he had thought about riding again and, and it's something that we had talked about maybe doing in the future. Um, but he will be with me. He'll be with me in many ways, but he will be on my left shoulder. His name and, and honoring Sam this weekend is going to be something that's going to be very special for me and very emotional at the same time. We went to lunch probably once a week for many, 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 many years. And we would go to Panera. And every single time we would get up to order, we would, he would order pick two and he would invariably say, I want pick two, and the person would say, what do you want? And he'd say, I don't know, what should I have? Um, and the person would say, well, I don't know, what do you feel like? And he'd say, well, it's between the French onion soup and the tomato soup, but I don't know what I feel like. T tell me what I should have. Um, and she, she would say, I, I don't know, they're very different. And he, then he turned to me and say, what should I have? And then I would go through the same thing with him and the line would get longer and longer and longer. And finally he would turn to the person next to him and say, what should I have? And I think the person next to him who was wanting to get some food would get sick of all of this. And so he or she would say, the onion soup. And he would say, good, that's what I'm having. I'm having the onion soup. And that happened every single time. Um, and I, as I understand it, this was typical Sam. I think every day was an experience, every day was an adventure. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories about Sam, we used to be uh, on Fridays after our home games, we used to drive to uh, Rhode Island. We used to go and watch Rhode Island play against uh, the team we're going to be playing on Sunday against. And uh, Sam uh, would insist that we go to the games, although we usually get about 15, 20 minutes to the end of the game. So soccer-wise, we wouldn't get much. Uh, the entire road, we would talk about life and about family. and. Uh, on the way back, we used to stop at Outback, which was one of uh, Sam's uh, favorite places to eat and, uh, uh, you know, eat a good dinner. And uh, on the way back, Sam would tell me, you know, why won't you take the wheel and we can keep talking. And uh, without a fail, five minutes into the conversation, uh, I would hear him snoring and I would just be, uh, keep talking to myself. So, you know, Sam Koch was definitely a legend, he was a mentor, was uh, a good man. And uh, uh, as you can see, so many people loved him and uh, so many lives he touched. So, I think the biggest thing that he tried to teach people was, you know, one of the one of the sort of cliches in, in sports is uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And but that's Sam Coke in, in a nutshell. He believed that 
if you worked a little bit harder than the other team, if you prepared a little bit better, if you sacrificed a little bit more, the rewards would be there. It might not be there the first game of the season, it might not be there the second game of the season, but the rewards would be there, and they would certainly be there in your life after soccer. And uh, I think that's what, 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 what Coach you know, tried to instill in his teams, was you work hard, you sacrifice for, for one another, and uh, the results will be there. And uh, it's something that I've carried forward with me for the rest of my life and, and, and probably always will. Sam and I started about the same time. We shared an office together in the beginning downstairs. And oh, I remember um, he's one of the reasons why I was so happy to come to work. Uh, when I first started, I was a health educator counselor in the department. And coaches weren't too keen on ha talking to a health educator or counselor. So when Sam started about two weeks after I did, I went to him and said, hey, I have to have all these meetings with your team and everything. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And uh, that's how it all started, you know? And from then on, he was my best friend. And uh, he's a great guy. He will be sorely missed. He was one of the best coaches, men, I'll ever know. Um, he saved so many of his players' lives, literally and figuratively, and he's, uh, he, he's just a great man. Well, we all know what uh, Sam meant to UMass soccer and to the people around, but for me it was a little more personal. Um, Sam taught me more. Uh, I have the relationship that I have with my father today because of Sam. He was always a family man. Uh, my father and I didn't get along when I was growing up, you know, being a stubborn kid. Um, but the relationship I have now um, with my father is uh, credited to Sam and how he taught us to grow up as young men and an individual through the program. So it's something I'll forever be indebted to him for. Sam Koch, all of us guys who played with him or coached with him, I think everybody here today would say they, they lost their best friend. The thing about Sammy that everybody here knows is he was probably one of the best friends that anyone could ever have. He'd always reach out, see what he could do to help, call you when he needed a hand, call you when he could help you guys out. He was the hardest worker. We remember for the day when he was struggling to be a coach and then he ended up getting the Stanford job and then the UMass job and he, he loved the UMass job and he was just a great guy and we really miss him. I actually went to graduate school here and when I got here they had reinstated our soccer program, the men's soccer program at that time and so I got hired uh, in order to, to work as an athletic trainer uh, and Sam was the new head coach at that time so uh, I got to work with him for two years during that period of time uh, which was just unbelievable. I mean I got to know him you know at, at, during the beginning of the, of the period of time that he was here. Um, so. And then uh, when I got to come back, I came back in 2001 uh, as the director of sports medicine here and he was a big part of that. He uh, uh, helped in that process in terms of uh, just kind of, you know, talking to me about the position, talking to me about uh, what was going on here. And so uh, uh, even, in, even though he was sick as a dog the night of my interview, he still came over just to say hello and, uh, and he wasn't able to have the meal with us, but uh, he still wanted to just show his support of me, which really meant a lot to me. He's the type of guy who I could walk into his office, let him know I had 30 minutes to talk, and then in about an hour I'd be walking out of there. Not because I was required to, but just because it was genuinely just a great conversation. It's just a lot about team unity. You know, when we all come in, we're all from other places around the country. Um, so, you know, when you come in, he does a really good job of just kind of blending us all together to be one team and just be comfortable, whether it be coming up to him or just be comfortable in classes, everything. He just, for a lot of guys, it's out of, we're out of state. So when we come in, he's open, he has open arms, um, and he does a good job in believing in his players. Um, he always has your, tr your trust and everything, so he does a really good job of just making you feel welcome. When we were walking down from the Boyden Fields, we were walking from practice to another practice we were going to have. It was a scrimmage. And he asked me, he asked me what I was doing on Thanksgiving. And I, I was a little puzzled because I wasn't sure why he was asking me something that was so far in the future. So I told him I was going to have dinner with my family. And he kind of laughed at me and said, Mr. Cirillo, you're supposed to say we're going to be in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I said, all right. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's where we're going to be. And uh, turns out for Thanksgiving, we were sitting down the street at the Harp together with the team, the families. 
We were in the first round of the NCAA tournament, and it was a special, special time. I think my favorite Sam memory was, I think it was my junior year, spring of my junior year, we came out for the annual spring uh, walk-on tryouts, which you know were sort of near and dear to my heart because that was how I made the team. And it was something that was very important to Sam, have spring walk-on tryouts every year. And uh, we get out there, it's about 7 in the morning. I think there's still some sleet on the ground. Um, and he's as excited as, as can be. You know, I, despite the fact that I have a, have, a, have a spot in my heart for these tryouts, was not happy to be there. He was very happy to be there. We walk out and there is a massive man. Turns out it was Chris Picos, former uh, recon marine. He's out there on the, on the field with about 25, 30 other walk-ons. And Chris Picos has them in the mid, in, a, in a big circle, running a uh, a full blown warm up. He's got, got them going through calisthenics, uh, push ups, all sorts of things. And coach is like, who, who, "Who is that trying to run my practice?" I said, "Coach, I I don't know, but I think I think he looks like he's doing a pretty good job." He said, "Well, you know, I think he can probably take me. So he might have a spot on the team, but I don't know about him." It turns out, you know, Coach, Coach and Chris ended up having a, a great relationship, and uh, and uh, that was one of my one of my favorite memories. Was you know, Coach is, Coach always gives anyone that works hard, anyone that takes responsibility for themselves and the people around them a chance, and uh, that's how I made the team, and that's how Chris made the team, and that's how a lot of people ended up on UMass soccer and ended, make, ended up making an impact here, and uh, you know, I I owe I owe. A lot to him, and, and uh, yeah, great guy. Knowing Sam for 23 years, uh, I mean, everything from uh, being on the road with him when I was a GA, a 23-year-old GA, and just uh, learning, um, you know, about athletics, learning about life. Uh, you know, he was uh, just about to get married to Suzanne at that time, and um, you know, I had uh, was thinking about. Um, you know, proposing to my girlfriend at that time as well, and I ended up proposing at that time, and uh, uh, he was a part of that, him and uh, Robbie Dunnsworth, uh, the uh, assistant coach. So uh, even back then, he was a big part of my life. Uh, he, um, you know, he, he just meant so much to me just in terms of uh, how he lived his life and how he uh, went about things. And so I learned a lot from him on how to treat people, uh, how to lead people, and to laugh. I mean, it, the laughter was unbelievable all the time. Whether it was, uh, you know, sitting in his office, sitting in my office. His office used to be across from the training room, so we'd visit a, a lot. So, uh, you know, it really, uh, those are probably the, the things that will all carry on and pass along to my children. And, and uh, yeah, again, he just meant so much to me in that regard. We used to sit in our either offices and talk about things. And But the, the best occasions that we had, we went to Joe's Pizza. We'd go there uh, on a probably once a month night and uh, used to sit down and talk and, and have some pizza and just have a great time and uh, help each other out as far as um, our, you know, our coaching situations were concerned and just talk about life and our families and our coaching experiences and just uh, really had a, had a special time. Good old Fairbanks, Alaska. It wasn't as cold here as it was there. Um, so. You know, and in the end, the 6 a.m. stuff just became natural, norm, you know. When I was first here, I was like, hey, 6 a.m., can't do this, you know. But quickly, it just, just became part of the process and product. He had a recruit come in one time, a, um, a family from Connecticut, um, a very proper family. The mother came in in a dress and heels and stockings, and the father came in in a jacket and tie, and the student came in, the recruit. And uh, Sam was talking to the family and things were going fine until a giant cockroach walked across his desk and he, without missing a beat, picked up a glass and smashed the cockroach and the woman was uh, appalled and Sam said, oh no, 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 this is just one of the things that we have to do for hand-eye coordination uh, drills and your, and your son will be down here next year and this is one of the things we do for the team, for team practices. So, and again, just went on with their recruiting. And I never knew whether this recruit came or not, but certainly Sam made very little of it and just went on. I mean, one thing that just I always remember is his, you know, his hat throws on the sideline when he's fired up and excited and he's thrown his hat excited. And just him in general, how, how enthusiastic he always is about the game when he comes out to practice in the morning and says, 
It's a beautiful day to be alive, gentlemen, stuff, stuff like that. So Sam last year had to make a decision about whether or not to play the St. Bonaventure game. And um, he left with 12 out of 26 players. Um, and they had a, a difficult year last year. Um, and he, uh, 14 players, broke team rules right before a, a game in St. Bonaventure. And he made the decision, even though he didn't need to make this decision, he could have rescheduled this game. But he, in typical Sam style, decided that it was much more important to teach the lesson and to let the 12 kids that were there go and do their thing. And they drove all the way to St. Bonaventure, got out, um, warmed up, and beat St. Bonaventure 2-1. Um, with just 12 players and again that was a typical Sam do the right thing decision. When someone says Sam what do I think about him? Um, I really just think about like everything that he stands for you know how, how dedicated he was to us, his job, his family, um, how positive he always was and how determined he was and honesty and charity all those things that make him him um, is what really comes to mind right when I think about him and how he's made me who I am today and shape me into the person that I'll be for the next 60 years, so. He was, um, he was one of a kind. He was, he was one of a kind. And, and you can tell because here we are at this celebration of his life, and not only do you have players, former players here, but you have their parents here too. There are some parents who are here and their kids aren't even here. So that tells you the impact that he has on people. What he reminded me every day was to have a passion for what you do, <laughs> to commit fully, to being the best teacher that you can be, both on the field and off the field for me, on the court and off the court. He reminded me every day about team and how important team is. And most of all, he reminded me to never, ever give up.